Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Welcome to FuseNet's briefing on the food security outlook for Afghanistan for the period of June 2024 to January 2025. My name is Diana Bartone, and I'm the FuseNet Early Warning Team's Deputy Decision Support Advisor. In today's briefing, I'll start with the key messages that we hope that you walk away with today. I'll then take you through our analysis in more detail, starting with the current situation updates. Then we'll look to the future and discuss our assumptions that underpin the most likely scenario for the projection period through January 2025. And we'll conclude with the resulting projected food security outcomes for the period of June 2024 through January 2025. Before diving into that, though, I want to briefly situate everyone to some key elements of seasonal context in Afghanistan that are key to our analysis of food security outcomes throughout the projection period. The main harvest, primarily of wheat, is currently ongoing. And because this is a key food and income source for many poor rural households, the fact that we're in the harvest period means that seasonally it is a time of relatively favorable food access. And looking to the projection period, we see that the winter wet season will start in October, and this will coincide with the planting period for next year's wheat harvest. While the wet season does bring seasonal benefits to households rearing livestock as well, food stocks from the wheat harvest seasonally decline during this time, ushering in the lean season. And in addition to declining food stocks, labor opportunities decrease seasonally during the winter, contributing further to food and income scarcity during the lean season. And all this seasonality underlies why we expect that food security will generally begin to deteriorate as we move toward the end of the projection period uh, in January 2025. So let's turn to the key messages of FUSENET's analysis. So our first key message, uh, despite declining food prices, poor economic conditions continue to limit income earning opportunities for poor households in Afghanistan nationwide. Between June and September 2024, the ongoing main harvest in lowland areas is expected to support stressed IPC phase two outcomes. However, crisis IPC phase three outcomes are expected in northeastern and central highland areas where the harvest has not yet started. Crisis outcomes are also expected in some northern and western provinces that are still recovering from the lingering impacts of prior droughts and crisis outcomes are expected in urban areas where poor households face limited labor opportunities. Impacts of the recent flooding um, that we'll touch on later in the presentation will exacerbate acute food insecurity in affected provinces during this period as well. In the October 2024 to January 2025 period, food security outcomes will generally worsen with the onset and progression of winter when the availability of income earning opportunities declines. Crisis IPC phase three outcomes will likely emerge in several nor northern provinces during this period as households exhaust food stocks from the harvest amid below average remittances from Iran. On the other hand, outcomes are expected to improve to stressed IPC phase two in some central highland areas with the harvest as the harvest starts later in highland areas. Humanitarian food assistance needs are expected to overall increase seasonally throughout the projection period, particularly during the winter and lean seasons as households deplete their food stocks from the 2023 2024 harvest and income earning opportunities are limited. As the lean season starts to peak in early 2025, an estimated eight to nine million people will likely require humanitarian food assistance. We'll now dive into our current situation updates with a reminder that the current situation in this analysis is June, uh, though we have endeavored to update the information presented where possible. While the wet season typically concludes in April, an early onset of monsoon precipitation is bringing rainfall in late June and July. The map here is showing precipitation as a percentage of average from April to July of 2024. And you can see that uh, generally above average spring rainfall has uh, fallen over much of the country during this period. 
And this, as well as some uh, rainfall during prior months not mapped here, has generally supported crop development prior to the harvest, with crop conditions having improved um, since rainfall uh, increased around February, following below average precipitation that occurred largely in the first half of the season. However, heavy rainfall uh, late in the season has also led to flooding in northern, northeastern, and western areas since May, causing crop and livestock losses in affected areas. And despite the drier start to the 2023-2024 precipitation season, the favorable, favorable precipitation after February um, has supported crop recovery generally, and yields are generally expected to be favorable with a near average harvest expected at the national level, as depicted by this uh, GeoGlam crop monitoring map on the left, showing crop conditions as of the end of June. However, crop production is expected to be below average in some northern rain-fed areas, given uh, below average area planted primarily. And trends in vegetation um, conditions as measured by satellite um, imagery support this expectation. And the map on the right shows uh, this, this, this map shows generally improved vegetation conditions as of mid-July across most of the country, though you can see the areas of below average vegetation conditions observed across Northern uh, Afghanistan, covering much of the nor Northern Rainfeld northern rain fed production belt and the harvest did start on time in may in lower elevation areas of the east and south which start harvesting earliest in afghanistan and as of july the harvest has now concluded in lower elevation areas of the east south and north and it is ongoing in central and western regions while in central and northeastern highland areas the harvest is has not started and is not expected to start um, for another month or so. And production estimates available from the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, and Livestock also indicate favorable wheat production outcomes at the national level, estimated at around 4.9 million metric tons in 2024. And this is 13% above last year's production and 6% above the five-year average. And it's worth noting that part of this is uh, part of the favorable production um, outcomes in 2024, as well as um, a share of the production in 2023, is attributable to a response to the ban um, currently enacted on poppy cultivation, um, which has resulted in farmers in so the southern provinces of Kandahar and Helmand provinces replacing poppy with wheat. Um, playing an instrumental role in boosting national level wheat production. These two provinces, Kandahar and Helmand, have contributed 13 to 15% of national wheat production in the past two years. Now turning to look at prices. Since 2022, inflation has been easing in Afghanistan with prices beginning to decline by 2023. And this is largely due to appreciation of Afghanistan's currency, the Afghani, supported by regular auctions of foreign currency by the central bank. According to the World Bank's Afghanistan Economic Monitor Report in May 2024, headline inflation fell to negative 7.7%, um, indicating food price declines year on year in April, driven by a drop in food inflation to negative 12.2%, with non-food inflation also declining to negative 2.2%. And so declining food prices, um, though largely due to depreciation of the, I'm, I'm sorry, appreciation of the currency, have also been supported by several years of relatively favorable um, wheat harvests, as well as generally stable trade flows and generally stable fuel prices. And these, um, this, these trends of declining food prices it, uh, are generally um, supporting improved food access for many market-dependent households in the country. And here, um, just to take a closer look at uh, trends in food prices, we're looking at trends in prices of staple wheat grain in four key mon markets of Afghanistan, Faisalabad, Herat, Kabul, and Kandahar. 
And as you can see, prices in 2024 shown by the green lines are tracking at levels below last year, which is the red dotted line and below the five-year average, which is shown, um, I'm, the five-year average or the two-year average, um, which is shown uh, by the brown bars. You'll also notice looking at the green line that prices have declined seasonally in recent months. And this is linked to increases in market supply as traders release old stocks in advance of the harvest season. We can see a similar declining price trend looking at cooking oil and diesel. Cooking oil prices are shown for two markets, Kabul and mazar -e sharif on the top of the slide and diesel prices shown for Kabul and Herat are on the bottom. Prices of both of these commodities have declined in recent years, again, largely linked to appreciation of the Afghani. With that overview of the relatively favorable harvest and declining prices of food and fuel, we'll next look at the income available to poor households to purchase food and essential non-food items. The chart on this slide shows two data series important for monitoring income earning amongst unskilled laborers. And we're looking at unskilled labor uh, trends because unskilled labor is an important source of income for poor households, especially in urban areas. So first, the light green bars show trends in wage rates for unskilled labor. And the dark green line shows trends in demand for labor. And this is measured by the number of days per week that an unskilled laborer can typically find work. And you can see seasonal fluctuations linked to declining demand for labor in winter periods, uh, as this is a time where economic activity uh, typically slows down, such, such as a slowdown in construction. Uh, though you'll notice that wage rates have largely um, recovered to levels recorded prior to the political transition in August of 2021, while on the other hand, the demand for labor, while it has improved, has not fully recovered. So demand, low demand for labor is a key constraint um, for income earning amongst poor households in Afghanistan. And in May 2024, an unskilled laborer could typically work for only 2.2 days per week on average. And this is largely a product of the lack of employment opportunities available and intense competition for the limited available opportunities amid other factors such as decreased remittances from Iran and a high number of Afghan returnees from Iran and more recently Pakistan, amongst other factors. And now we'll look at food prices and trends in income earning amongst unskilled laborers combined into a single indicator that shows the amount of food an unskilled laborer can purchase based on earnings possible each month. The blue bars on the chart show the cost of WFP's minimum food basket, which consists of wheat flour, cooking oil, rice, and pulses. And again, you'll note the declining trend in food prices. And the dark blue line shows the share of the total cost of the basket that an unskilled laborer could purchase under the assumption that the laborer is working the average available number of days per week and at the average wage rates that we looked at on the previous slide. And currently an unskilled laborer can only afford around 50% of that minimum food basket. And now to touch on the Afghan returnees mentioned previously, UNH UNHCR reports that around 650,800 Afghans have returned from Pakistan between September 15th, 2023 and June 30th, 2024. And returns have been steadily increasing since March with May and June showing a significant increase of approximately 40,000 returns. The map on the right shows the location of returnees as of 2022 and 2023, with the majority concentrated in Kabul and the eastern provinces bordering Pakistan. Many of these returnees are expected to be highly dependent on labor amid scarce opportunities and high competition for available opportunities. UNHCR and partners did report reaching around 
540,000 people with assistance in most of Afghanistan's provinces in June of 2024. Lastly, given scarce income, oper income earning opportunities and the lasting impacts of multiple recent weather shocks on livelihoods, humanitarian food assistance does remain an important source of food and income for millions of Afghans at risk of acute food insecurity. As you can see, the scale of reach has declined from peak levels observed in 2022 and 2023, but WFP was still reaching over 6 million people monthly in the early months of 2024. In May and June, though, the reach was lower. WFP provided general food assistance and cash-based transfers to around 2.8 million people in May, and this total declined further in June. Now, this decline is in line with typical patterns of declines in humanitarian assistance provision in the harvest and post-harvest period. Um, currently, the flood-affected population in the north, northeast, and western parts of the country are the primary objective of humanitarian food assistance distributions. So with that overview of the current situation, we'll turn to key assumptions for the projection period. And this is not an exhaustive list, but rather highlights some of the most fundamental assumptions underpinning our most likely scenario. You can find additional assumptions uh, in FuseNet's June Food Security Outlook report and happy to discuss any questions that you have following this briefing. First, crop production is expected to be near average at the national level, but local variations are anticipated. Seasonal improvements in food availability associated with the harvest in 2024 are expected to last through the summer across much of the country. Following this, household and market stocks will begin to decline seasonally uh, and will continue to decline throughout the winter. Food prices are anticipated to remain comparatively low, um, supported by the near average 2024 harvest and steady supply of imported wheat. Economic growth is expected to remain weak with income earning opportunities expected to seasonally decline during the winter. Remittances are expected to remain at below average levels as well. And looking to the start of the 2024-2025 precipitation season, precipitation season, rainfall during the start of the season is currently forecast to be below average linked to forecast La Nina conditions. The map on the slide shows the below average precipitation forecast for the October to December period across much of the country. And we expect that this will likely result in below normal labor demand during the land preparation and planting period as farmers will likely reduce area planted. So building on these assumptions, in addition to other assumptions um, that we don't have time to discuss, uh, building on our assumptions about the evolution of factors relevant for households, access to key food and income sources, FuseNet projects the most likely food security outcomes. But before showing these outcomes, just a quick reminder for those who are unfamiliar, FuseNet classifies acute food insecurity using the IPC 3.1 scale. And the key things to know about the scale for response um, are that first, a household in phase three or worse is in need of urgent humanitarian food assistance because a household in phase three or worse is not consuming enough food to meet their minimum kilocalorie needs or they are engaging in unsustainable coping that threatens their capacity to meet their food needs in the near future. Second, an area classified in any given IPC phase means that at least 20% of the population is in that IPC phase or worse in that area. So our projected food security outcomes, first starting with the June to September period. From June to September, households' access to food and income generally improves alongside the main harvest of wheat, as well as the harvest of vegetables and fruit in different parts of the country. In eastern, southern, and so southeastern parts of the country where harvesting is ongoing, this is expected to support stressed IPC phase two outcomes during this period. Meanwhile, in the central highlands and northeastern parts of the country where the harvest has not started, crisis IPC phase three outcomes are expected. 
This is being driven by poor economic conditions and limited livelihood opportunities, as well as declining income from remittances and in some provinces, the impacts of recent floods. And amongst those provinces impacted, Baglan province um, in, in the Northwest is among the most affected. Additionally, crisis IPC phase three outcomes are expected in northern and western provinces given localized below average production, as well as ongoing slow recovery from the multi-year drought. Um, from 2021 to 2023, drought conditions were experienced that adversely impacted the crop and livestock sector, um, and households are still working to recover their assets and livelihoods um, amid poor economic conditions. Now, from October 2024 to January 2025, food security outcomes will generally worsen as the winter and lean seasons progress. In northern Afghanistan, crisis IBC phase three outcomes are expected to emerge in several provinces as food stocks from the 2024 harvest decline and households increase their reliance on market purchases amid the decline in remittances from Iran. In urban areas, the ongoing economic slowdown high levels of unemployment and competition for the limited labor opportunities available are also expected to um, continue to strain households purchasing capacity despite declining food prices, um, particularly affecting the casual labor dependent population, including recently returned Afga Afghans. In urban areas, crisis outcomes are expected to persist during the winter when income opportunities decline further. On the other hand, stressed IPC phase two outcomes are likely to emerge in some central highland provinces, supported by the conclusion of the wheat harvest as well as the potato harvest around October, um, and uh, as well supported by some improve improvements in livestock productivity over the summer. Lastly, a couple of points to keep in mind to complement the analysis of most likely outcomes. First, while if falls outside of our projection period, we would flag that we have relatively greater concern for acute food insecurity in the months following um, our projection period as the lean season will progressively intensify leading up to the 2025 harvest. Additionally, we're monitoring several possible events that while currently not part of the most likely scenario do remain possible and would change our expectations for most likely outcomes if they manifest. First, given the forecast La Nina, we already anticipate a moderately below average rainfall season. However, should this be a season marked by significant and widespread drought, we'd expect worse food, worse acute food insecurity outcomes than currently anticipated. And this is something we're closely monitoring given the evolving rainfall forecast. Similarly, we're monitoring the potential for a higher than anticipated influx of Afghan returnees, as well as monitoring the potential for trade restrictions imposed by neighboring countries such as Pakistan, uh, such as uh, what has occurred in the past. With that, I will conclude. We can turn off the recording and would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much.